This is the heart of Milan, the Duomo Piazza, where there is a statue of the first king of Italy, Victor Emmanuel II. The Galleria named after him, said to be one of the world's oldest shopping malls, and the Duomo, the Cathedral of Milan. The third largest cathedral in the world, it took nearly six centuries to complete. A golden statue of the Virgin Mary sits on top of a spire. The material used in the construction is brick with unique pink marble. The cathedral is decorated with an amazing number of beautifully sculpted statues. There are five large bronze doors to enter the cathedral. 40,000 people can fit inside. The small red light bulb marks the space where one of the nails from the crucifixion is located. There are 55 stained glass windows. There are numerous works of art. The most famous is the statue of Saint Bartholomew, who was skinned alive. What is meant to look like a cloak on his shoulders and around his body is actually his skin. The Galleria is a luxury shopping mall that opened in 1877. It features four-story high glass ceilings with an octagonal glass dome in the center. The floor under the dome has four mosaics with the symbols Rome with the wolf, Milan with a white flag and red cross, Florence with the lily, and Turin with the bull, the most popular. Superstition, we believe that if you want to be lucky forever and ever, you need to spin around three times, crashing the testicles of the bull. As you can see, the testicles of the bull are completely faded away. A more contemporary shopping center, the Renoscente, is nearby. The seventh floor has a food court. Behind this statue is a public drinking fountain that anyone can use. Our host shows us how. I don't like to drink like this. I like to drink like this. <laughs> we do like this. We are here to see the painting of The Last Supper by Da Vinci. Only 20 people at a time are allowed in the room for 15 minutes. It was painted on the wall of the dining room of the Dominican convent of Santa Maria de la Grazie. Painted between 1495 and 1498, it measures 15 feet by 28.8 feet. Technically, it is not a fresco, and over the years it has undergone a number of restoration efforts. Search the internet and you will learn many interesting facts about the painting. The Crucifixion, a fresco by Giovanni Donato, is on the opposite wall. Sforza's castle was built in the 15th century on the remains of a 14th century fortification by the Duke of Milan, Francesco Sforza. Today the castle houses several museums. This is the interior courtyard. The coat of arms of the Sforza family, a snake consuming a human. This is the central tower of the main entrance to the castle. Front is a lovely fountain. We love our fountain. We call it the wedding cake. Where we have our picture taken. 
before the tour is over. That building is the La Scala Opera House, and across the street is a monument to Leonardo da Vinci. The hotel has a nice buffet breakfast, or dessert if you're Mark. We're waiting at the meeting point for the Lake Como excursion. It's about a two-hour bus ride, and it'll be nice to leave the heat of Milan. We start in Verena, where we go on a lake cruise by a private boat. Our wonderful guide Chiara from Milan is with us and does a great job showing us the sights. The ramp down to the boat was a bit steep, but we all made it. You can take a good picture. Because we have Varen in the back. Huh? See on the top of the hill, the castle, Castello di Vezio, built in the 12th century. So long, long time ago. Can you see that the lake has the shape of a Y upside down? Huh? It looks like a man with two legs that is walking. Varenna is the place uh, that we left behind, this small town. Varenna, the town that we left behind, that is a fisherman village. The yellow villa with a clock, uh, there is a white clock in the middle on the top. Okay, this is called Villa Ricordi. And this is the place uh, where uh, the Queen Margherita at the beginning of the 19th century used to live. So you can see the Grand Hotel Tremezzo. This is a beautiful hotel and it has a swimming pool right on the lake. Can you see this is a swimming pool? Huh? Uh, over there we have the black quarries of the black marble of Varenna that we use for the um, decoration on the ground of the Duomo Cathedral. Take a look to the one that looks like a medieval castle over there. How beautiful it is. The owner is, I don't know if he's well known abroad. Sometimes you say yes, sometimes not. Ducati. The Ducati, they make the motorbikes. Villa del Balbianello is probably the most beautiful and most famous villa here. It hosts private events such as weddings, and even James Bond made an appearance here in Casino Royale. It's called Villa La Castinella. It's very exclusive, can be reached just with a boat. Forbes, the magazine, say that Villa La Castinella, here, right in front of you, is one of the 11 most beautiful villas in the world. Inside there is a cinema, there is a gym, a tennis field. Take a look to the beautiful flowers. Huh? This is a nice walk that leads you to the city center of Bellagio, which is very nice. This villa is on sale. Yeah. This one. Is it good enough for you? Yeah. So please don't leave your belongings on the boat because we are going to get off now. On our free time in Bellagio, I walked up the shop line steps. At the top, I looked at silk, which Lake Como is famous for. I took a less crowded way back down. We sat and ate lunch, watching the boarding of the ferry and waiting for our boat. And there it is. Leaving Bellagio, we crossed the lake to our waiting bus and returned to Milan. As we returned to the city, we passed by some of Milan's impressive skyscrapers. In the plaza on our last night in Milan.
This is Verona, well known as the setting of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. It has a history that spans more than 2,000 years. This ancient Roman gate was the main entrance to the city. In the city's oldest square, you will find the frescoed Menzanti houses from the 16th century, the 800-year-old Lamberti Tower, along with the open-air stands. A statue of Dante he lived in Verona for seven years and wrote part of the Divine Comedy here. Here's Juliet's balcony. And this is a statue of her that you can rub for good luck. This is Romeo's house. The Gothic-style tombs of the Della Scala family ruled the Verona in the 13th and 14th century. The Verona Arena, a Roman amphitheater, was built in the first century. Today, it is internationally famous for its summer opera festival. In Valpolicella, at the Alighieri estate, owned by descendants of Dante Alighieri, we have a multi-course lunch paired with wines. Each course and paired wine is explained. We enjoyed it from start to finish. We arrived in Venice and are welcome to board our ship. We wait in the bar for our room key. In our room there's lots of closet space. The walls are very well padded so it's nice and quiet. And there's a nice view from our window. This is the ship's reception area next to the bar where the captain holds a safety briefing. A short evening stroll ends our first day in Venice. That's St. Mark's Square, and on the right is the Doge's Palace. This morning we are walking to the square for a tour of the palace. With the view of San Giorgio Island, St. Mark's Square is the historic city center. With the winged lion of St. Mark, the statues that line the roof of the library, the bell tower, the basilica, the clock tower, and the bridge of size, which we will cross later. We are in the courtyard of the palace. Those are the statues of Mars and Neptune at the top of the staircase of the giants. Going up the stairs into the palace where stunning artwork surrounds you. This is the council chamber. This is the hall of the council of ten. This large room, the chamber of the Great Council, had to accommodate up to 1,800 noblemen. This wall has the largest oil painting in the world, Paradise by Tintoretto. We are going to see the prison cells and walk over the Bridge of Sighs, where the prisoner had his last look at Venice before imprisonment or worse. An interesting thing I learned while walking back to the ship is that when walking in Venice, distance is measured by the number of bridges you have to cross. On the water, it's the number of boat stops. The Arsenal, a former shipyard, was the heart of Venetian shipbuilding from the 13th century producing much of Venice's naval power. Back on board, it's lunchtime. 
This afternoon, on the sun deck, we'll sail around the lagoon, enjoying the sights while drinks are brought to us. Soon we'll have a demonstration of sabering, opening a champagne bottle with a saber, followed by champagne tasting in the bar. Do, we are doing sabrage always with the champagne, we never do with the sparkling wine, we never do with uh, this kind of um, Prosecco, due to the fact that the pressure in the side of the sparkling wine or the Prosecco is uh, much more lower than a champagne. Uh, button so we need a sword when we do this uh, sabering we don't need to use the sharp part never with the sharp part we always we use the neat part one two three an early buffet dinner since we have an evening tour of st mark's A water taxi takes us to St. Mark's Square. This is our stop. After a short walk, we enter the Basilica. The interior is clad with over 40,000 square feet of gold mosaics. They sparkle in the dim lighting. Upon entering, your eyes may be drawn to the iconostasis with 14 statues, 12 apostles, the Virgin, and Saint Mark. The gold altarpiece has almost 2,000 gemstones. There's the burial place of St. Mark. It is said that walking between the columns of St. Mark and St. Theodore brings bad luck. Here's the water taxi stop with such a great view. And soon we're back at our ship. Across the canal is a gondola shipyard that has existed for many generations. On our visit, we learned that it takes two to three months to construct a gondola, and with proper maintenance, it will last for 40 years. The right side of the gondola is lower, since the gondolier always stands in the back of the boat on the left. The boats are built with eight different types of wood, cost around 40,000 euro, and, according to Venice law, they are all black. We pass one of Venice's two hospitals. There's an ambulance boat in front. That's another gondola shipyard. Back on board, we are sailing to Chioggia. Chioggia is a fishing town, sometimes called Little Venice. We are going on a traditional fishing boat called the Bergozo. There is even a song about it that is played while we sail. Those are mussel farms. After about 30 minutes, we head back to port. Passing the mussel harvesting boats before we disembark. We are having lunch at this family farm that is also a bed and breakfast. The noise of the cicada was constant. 
tonight is our welcome aboard dinner. A special four-course dinner. We are in Bologna, and we start the morning with a guided city walking tour. Here in the central square is City Hall, the still unfinished Basilica of San Petronio that began in 1390, and nearby the Fountain of Neptune. Bologna is known for its covered porticos that can be traced back to the Middle Ages. The main symbol of the city are these two leaning towers from the 12th century. Asinelli, the taller one, Garicenda, the more tilted one. Italian college graduates still wear the traditional laurel wreath on graduation day. One of my favorite things to do is check out the local food. Tagliatelle and tortellini, the pastas of Bologna is famous for. My favorite part of this tour, the pasta making demonstration. Eggs and flour. Eggs and flour. Five eggs, normal eggs, um, and five carbon gas, five cups of flour. They very fine with flour. We call it double zero, it's the finest, the finest flour you can find. From now on, we talk about sfoglia. This is rolling the pin over the dough and see so we prepare a sfoglia. It can be uh, yellow because of the yolk, the color of the yolk. It can also be green. Now she will use that tool and she will cut some uh, smaller pieces. Did she measure it? Okay, now, uh, Luisa will place a, a bit of stuffing, this is ricotta cheese, ricotta is a fresh creamy cheese, she will fold it, she will do the same for what we call tortellone, this is uh, pressing very well the sides, and she will fold it around her finger. Now she's rolling, she's folding the uh, spoiler. She uh, starts from the middle because it's the longest part. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Right there. <laughs> Back in Venice, enjoying the sunset before the entertainment begins. back in Kyoja for a walking tour and to see the markets. The bell tower of the Church of St. James and one of the nine bridges that cross the canal. Another bridge. And the most artistic of them, Ponte de Vigo, with its white marble staircase. 
the clock tower in St. Andrew's Church. And here, on every Thursday, the entire street is a flea market. There are also food markets. And of course, the fish market, one of the oldest institutions in the city. Fishing has always been one of the city's main activities. The market has about 30 fishmonger stalls, which sell all types of fish and seafood. Best sellers are squid, shrimp, octopus, and crab. Legend has it that the houses were painted with a rainbow of bright colors so the fishermen could see their home from long distances while fishing. We are leaving Chioggia. Our next port is Burano, which we will reach in about two and a half hours of sailing. Burano is also known for its colorful houses. We have a guided orientation walk through Burano. It's late and most of the stores are closed. Besides the colorful houses, Burano is also known for its lace making. And we see a demonstration. I like the lawnmower they had out back. As we enter the lounge, there is a strange video playing. There's a party tonight, and there is a contest to pick the top three of the ten songs that most people will dance to. We entered as a team called the MJ. Guess who won a bottle of champagne? We just arrived in Torcello. Older than Venice, it was a very important island in ancient times. The Devil's Bridge has features of ancient Venetian bridges without railings. Some archaeological artifacts outside the museum But the main attraction is the Cathedral of Santa Maria Assunta, founded in 639, and the mosaics inside. The Last Judgment that covers the West Wall, and the Crucifixion. Our tour ends at this restaurant with a snack waiting for us. We just arrived in Murano, known worldwide for its glass making that dates back to 1291. We are here for a demonstration. Chandeliers, uh, drinking glasses, uh, flower vases, and eh? all the tradition. Remember, very, very important. In Murano, any piece from the small one, till the biggest, is completely and done. In 
Murano, we have no food. This is still a family tradition. It means the pass from father to son. And so the process of heating, blowing, and shaping continues several times until finally we have The glass is still hot and must cool for at least 24 hours. This is just some of the glass artwork displayed in the showroom. We walked along the canal looking at glass shops crossing bridges, taking pictures from bridges until it was time to leave. Our ship is returning to Venice. Even though it's raining, we walked over to the Academy Bridge after dinner where the views are always lovely. It's opera night in the lounge. Today is the last day of our trip and our last day in Venice. This morning we're going to the historic Rialto food market that has existed for almost 1,000 years. This is our stop. There's the Rialto Bridge. Gondolas are 35 feet long, and the gondolier must wear a uniform. Dark pants with blue or red striped shirt. The straw hat is optional. Since 1902, this is the official supplier of gondolier clothing. The Rialto Bridge is the oldest bridge that crosses the Grand Canal. Here in the Rialto Market, you can find fresh produce, meat, and some packaged goods, as well as a large selection of seafood. Our chef has also been shopping and he has a bag full of items that he will use for our dinner tonight. Time to explore on our own. The views from the Rialto Bridge are always good with a constant stream of boats. A little window shopping. Check out the cat. Watch the gondolier as he maneuvers under the bridge. Venice has 391 bridges crossing 150 canals. Is that a traffic light? In the afternoon, I couldn't resist another visit to the Academy Bridge. I watched the gondoliers navigate this intersection while trying to find my way back to the ship. One last toast, one last look, and tomorrow, goodbye Venice.
<laughs> you are able to find the camera in any smallest place on the ship.